Good afternoon, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane and Hurricane HD video blog for Monday, August 6, 2012. Wanted to start things off by looking at sea surface temperature anomalies. The Atlantic still running considerably above normal from Africa, generally all the way over to the Gulf of Mexico, even the subtropical Atlantic. Lots of positive anomalies. Sea surface temperatures running a quarter to a half, and in some cases, one and two degrees Celsius above normal, especially right here off the African coast. And this is uh, a little contradictory to what was thought to be uh, a different pattern this season where it was expected that the Atlantic in the tropics here would be colder than normal and that hasn't happened. In the eastern Pacific we see a little bit of cold anomalies trying to snake their way up from South America along what's called the Humboldt Current. It's a cold water current that runs along the west coast of South America here. There's enough high pressure sitting out over the eastern Pacific to steer the trade winds westward enough to cause a little bit of upwelling and to keep that developing El Nino from developing very rapidly. If we look at 2009, three years ago on this date, quite a stark contrast, a lot warmer back then as you can see here. Very warm anomalies through the central uh, and eastern Pacific, especially in the eastern Pacific, if I go back to today, I mean, look at that. Notice this region here. Yeah, it's warm right now, but three years ago, it was a lot warmer. And in the eastern Atlantic, yes, we had a pretty positive anomaly off of Africa, but most of the tropical Atlantic here was at, just at normal, and then in a few cases here, a larger area of below normal temperatures. And also three years ago, we had this one dominant area of positive anomalies over the subtropical Atlantic with a very cold anomaly right off the east coast of the United States. One more look at this year, that is completely different now. Very, very warm off the Northwest Atlantic Ocean area off the United States and the Canadian Maritimes and the most of the deep tropics here, as I mentioned from the start, uh, running above normal. So 2009, we were really into that El Nino pattern. This year, not so much. And another indicator of that is the SOI, or the Southern Oscillation Index. And usually, according to the Bureau of Meteorology, you need to see both of these indice numbers here, index numbers, especially this one, at minus 8 or lower. And then you have an El Nino type atmosphere, where the atmosphere is behaving more like an El Nino situation and an El Nino pattern. Even the daily contributor I can just call it zero statistically, but the 30 and 90 day numbers, only minus one and minus five. So not in an El Nino pattern, it's just not here yet, and that could have some pretty big implications. <laughs> New word, ramifications and implications, a meeting of the two words there, uh, on the Atlantic hurricane season, as noted by Dr. Phil Klotzbach in his August update, to the hurricane seasonal forecast. <clears throat> now I'll go over that in more detail tomorrow because I want to explain it. Instead of just throwing the numbers out there, I think explaining what the forecast is and what could or could not happen depending on certain variables is important. So we'll go over that tomorrow if I don't get a cold first. <clears throat> All right, so the track of Ernesto, clearly not gonna go up into the Gulf of Mexico and affect anybody up there. Also clearly it looks like a landfalling hurricane now for portions of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now Cozumel, Cancun are sitting up here. They're only under a tropical storm watch. So hurricane conditions and even tropical storm conditions likely not expected up in this region. Mainly going to be confined to the coast of Belize here and with Ernesto on the uptick trying to intensify, and it looks a lot better today, a lot more curved, the center right under this little core of deep convection, and with it heading towards Belize here and intensifying along the way, the effects, I wrote about this in my daily blog, the effects of the wind very well could be more exaggerated because when you have these deep thunderstorms that go up and they poke, if you will, into the wind field, that itself is intensifying. It is a lot more efficient, the storm is, or the hurricane, to bring those strong winds down to the surface. So you're likely to get more gusts that are strong and powerful, these stabs of wind, 
and we've experienced that, our team, uh, in hurricanes when we tracked them at landfall, especially Hurricane Charlie back in 2004. Definitely our experience that an intensifying storm or hurricane has a lot more wind gusts that can be damaging, and that's just something that people in Belize need to keep an eye on. Looking at water vapor imagery, the atmosphere getting a lot more moist around Ernesto. Still some mid-level dry air out ahead of it, but I think this is starting to shrink away, and Ernesto should have a clear shot at becoming a hurricane. If we look at its track on the heat potential map here, this is from our client services site. Uh, yeah, it's going to go over some pretty warm heat content, but the warmest of it is still to the north, so it won't be tapping the warmest water in the Atlantic Basin, but still, it's pretty warm, and that 80 degree line goes pretty deep. Hence the colors there that you see, uh, tropical cyclone heat potential representing how deep in the ocean that that warm water extends. Another satellite presentation, wow, look at that outflow coming out this way, uh, starting to get more established here, that wispiness of the clouds. You don't see the wind coming against it in any one direction. Uh, it's instead fanning out clockwise, way up high at about the 200 millibar level, if not higher. And uh, you just you see an intensifying storm here with a band of convection starting to wrap in. The center tucked in here somewhere, not out over the edge like it was a couple of days ago. And once again, as I mentioned, these intensifying storms tend to pack a more solid punch than those that are steady or certainly weakening. This, of course, will bring a coastal storm surge and the threat of torrential flooding rains. So anybody with any interest along the coast of Belize and then areas inland over Central America there along the southern part of the Yucatan Peninsula, you need to be ready because this will be a hurricane strike for your region, bringing a lot of heavy rain to portions of Central America. The rest of the Atlantic, uh, quiet. You see out here, Florence just died off. Too dry out here at the hostile conditions. Uh, just not ripe yet. Think about it. You know, it takes a little bit of time for a steak to cook on the grill. If you take it off too early, you got problems, right? The same thing goes with the tropics, that it just has to simmer a little bit more. And we're only on August the 6th. I think by the 15th through the 20th, this region out here will destabilize. The atmosphere will moisten up just enough that these storms will start holding on stronger. We will keep an eye on the remnant circulation. Remnant? Another word remnant circulation, uh, lots of new words invented today, of Florence to see where it ends up, just in case once it gets over here it tries to make some kind of a miraculous comeback. I don't see that happening in the global models, and the global models seem to be very trustworthy as of late, considering how well they handled Ernesto. So there you have it, a look at the tropics for Monday, August the 6th. I'll be back here again tomorrow. I'm Mark Seth, HurricaneTrack.com, my website. Always a pleasure to keep you up to date via Hurricane and Hurricane HD, and I'll do it again tomorrow.